Hi guys, welcome back to August Love Story, the channel. I am Artika. This is the spouse. Tommy. And uh, today we are here to review season four, episode two, because we skipped episode one of Ready to Love. And this episode is titled Mix Er and Mingle. Um, before we get into today's review, please take a moment to subscribe to our channel and turn on the notification bell. You ready to do this? Let's do it. That was aggressive. Was it? <laughs> <laughs> All right. So um, we'll try to remember to do this every episode, though we didn't do it very well last season. What was that? Starting with the elimination. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> it would be halfway through. Dang, we didn't say who got eliminated. Right, right, right. So... All right, so we started out. Um, Khalil was the first to get sent home, and second was Christian. Christian. This yep. week, the um, what do they call it? Curveball. The curveball he threw. Um, was that two guys got eliminated instead of two? I'm sorry, one man, one woman. Right. So Khalil and Christian were sent home. Can't say that I didn't see either of those coming. It was Khalil was not a surprise to me at all. I expected him to be sent home first. Absolutely. <laughs> from like the, it was like the first interaction with um I want to say his first interaction was I don't remember who it was with. Amber. I think it was, it, it was I wrote down that it, it was no, I don't know. It was with when they were outside with Tress Tressa. Tressa. And it was just the interaction he had with her. <laughs> and then when he sat down with Amber and talked to her, I was <laughs> like, yeah, he's going home mm -hmm. for sure. Um, Christian was a surprise to me, although when he like it, it was a, a surprise and not a surprise at the same time, just because it wasn't a surprise because they talked about it like Stacy, Kyra, or Kira, I don't know how to say her name. <laughs> Kira. And I mean, Kyra. Kyra. I'm Kyra sorry. and Vernicia, maybe. Mm -hmm. um, still get comfortable with their name. So forgive me if I said somebody's name wrong. But um, they them having a conversation of him not being assertive enough. Mm -hmm. That was, was Kyra that had that conversation. Yeah. And so, um, you know, I, I kind of was like, that's the not surprising part. But then the surprising part is, like, he is a nice guy. Mm -hmm. You know, you can tell he he was there for a purpose or whatnot. Kyra so. was like, come here, baby, and sit down next Right, that's how it was. That's how it was. Like, <laughs> come talk to your big sis. She like, was like, I don't look at him romantically at all. I'm taking on the sister role. You got to talk to these women. Right, right. They, they think you cute. They like you and everything. You just don't, you know. Mm -hmm. They don't look at you as the man. They look at you as a child. So Little brother. Yeah. All right, so I guess I wrote down my notes in the order of how the episode went. Go for I it. I can't remember how we did this in the past, so I'm just rolling let's, like this. Let's do it, however it comes out. All right, so we see Derek and Stacy coming up first. Dedrick is his name. I put Derek. Derek, <laughs> Derek Dedrick, <laughs> and I hope I put his name correctly the rest of this. Dedrick and Stacy um, sit down and talk first, and they talk about him having a grandchild. Mm-hmm. Um, and then David walks up and he introduces himself. Ems walks Vernicia and then Troy. Um, when I saw Troy, I was like, oh, Raymond 2.0. <laughs> yeah. I, because we didn't watch seasons one and two, I don't know if this is a staple in every yeah, season that we have to have a man that's hovering over everyone in age and a woman that's lingering under everyone in age because we got two this season. Yeah. Uh but Dedrick is 49. Yeah. Well, I'm talking about Troy being oh, 51. Yeah. Because I don't know, 49 hits different than 51. I guess I guess so. I don't know. Cause like you are 50. Anyway. <laughs> he's turning 50. Man, you already the funny him. thing about Troy is like he he seems first off, he looks like uh who played Michael Jackson's dad on the American Dream. I know who you're talking about, but I cannot. He remember looks. His he name. looks like that guy. <laughs> he does. <a> little <laughs> bit. <laughs> but uh, he he he's like. Oh, what is his he name? He tries to play a game too much because mm -hmm. he invited everybody on a trip. Every girl that he talked to, he let's take a trip. 
Mm-hmm. And then um, he was like, if I kiss on the cheek, lips to skin, you know, I got him. And I'm just like, no, you sound like a predator. But anyway. His name was Lawrence Hilton Jacobs. That's, that's, that's what it. you're thinking about. Yeah, he looks he looks <laughs> like him to me. Um, but that's, that's, the, that's the creepy thing about Troy. Which, which is the same weird creepy thing about, about Raymond. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it's something about the foof instead of the force. <laughs> okay, okay, I guess so. Um, so in whilst AJ, the producer, and all of the ladies drooled over him, at least Stacy and oh, I said I'm sorry, Miss Chrysanthemum, which everybody was messing up her name. I think you just did Chrysanthemum. That's how you say it. The um, yeah. Isn't it like you a putting flower? two M's in it? Oh, uh, yeah. She came in the flight attendant. <laughs> Chris, we just gonna call her Chris. Chris. Um, so they were drooling over AJ. She and Stacy. Then Liz and David um, met up with each other, and they decided to bond over their ability to hold a tune. Yeah. The funny part about that, David was leading the song. He was, <laughs> but she's the singer. He's been good. <laughs> I was like, okay, I was like, David. all right, Kirk Franklin. <laughs> all right, man, I see what you're doing there. Um, let's see. Next was Khalil, and oh, that was Tressa. It says he did not make an Im- impression on Tressa. Yeah. Tressa is the um comedian. It's the comedian, yeah, because he was like trying to figure out what club was in Houston. The the Comedy, comedy club, club. Mm-hmm. and the simple thing would have been well what club you you know as if if she is a stand-up comedian who is um i don't want to say doing well but but just actively doing, doing stand-up yeah. she's probably hit more than just the right. well, one well, well, and houston is a big city right so that's a that's an easy layup, <laughs> but he missed it. So yeah, which one you at again? <laughs> I might have seen you before. Right, easy lie to put easy, yourself into. Easy. Um. So next, uh, we see Kyra come in, and then Jason. Um, Jason I, walked up in the middle of that awkward exchange yeah. with uh, Khalil and Tessa. Tressa. Tressa. And he uh, was like, oh, she can make me laugh. I'm going to take this girl right here, though. <laughs> right, right. I was like, Kyra came in and stole the show with this green dress on. She did. And and as Jason say, her athletic build. <laughs> he was like, she got booty. She, she got some bombs on her. <laughs> um. So then after that, nephew Tommy came in and he welcomed everyone and then told them, "Uh, you know, there are 10 women here, but only nine men. Let me bring somebody back. And in walks Chris, KG Smooth, who... With, with the orange suit. Let me tell that you. That suit was nice. He is a springtime dream. That man is... Because last season, he had on a pink suit. This season, he, did, he had he on did. an orange, orange suit. suit. yeah. Like, what we gonna get? A nice, um, a nice sagey green? Pastel-y possibly, sagey possibly, green? Possibly, possibly. That man dressed though. <laughs> he does. How do you, how do you feel about him coming back to the show? You think it's a uh, <laughs> it's fair? You think it's it's the right move or what? Um, I think that there were other guys that could have gotten a more fair shot this season, like David. Mm-hmm. Um, I felt like he got unfairly sent home by Alicia, um, because basically he won't take care of her kids mm. that he didn't even know she was pregnant with <laughs> right right um i think that chris took a strategy because he thought he had um he had found the one and it turns out that he didn't so he's just gonna come in and and perhaps as he should at least having the experience of having done this before play the game better than the other guys mm-hmm. Because honestly and truly, we know that this show is not for you to find love. It is for you to play a game of finding love. Because the reason that you get sent home is for focusing your efforts on one person. When has that ever been love? Uh, (laughs) Oh. Like... I thought that's what love was. That's what I'm saying. (laughs) But like you get sent home for it. So it's like it's negative to focus your efforts on one person on this show. My thing was, I thought it was a good move just because, Mm -hmm. like, I get what you're saying. Like Mm -hmm. some of the other guys from the preview, if you was going to do it. Rashid, even. If you were going to do it, (laughs) uh, you know, like you would have brought back David. But Mm -hmm. if you were going to bring somebody back, I think Chris was a good good person to bring back just because of 
how he played as you said he <laughs> did play the game right I think mm-hmm. it was a strategy that he took and he found the person that you know he thought was going to be you know the person he finds a relationship with but in the end it, he got eliminated because she snapped and changed mm-hmm. at the at the drop of a hat because of a conversation that should have been had between them or, or more in depth uh, versus she was just obliging his time because we all know like everybody knows like that's not true Mm-mm. what you're saying is not true and so that's why I feel like Chris was a good move if you were going to bring somebody back yeah now I was just trying show. to save her face yeah. but I digress about her but yeah like I was just saying Rasheed would have even been a good one yeah. to bring back because I feel like Rasheed like he made it to next to the end and then he got beat out by a guy that didn't even like but that wasn't his fault no so I don't know I don't know Any, but anyway what you got um, so next up we see Jason and Alexis talk to each other and we found out that they um, well she knew who he was because he had been coaching her son in basketball and she was like I always thought he was fine you know but I always looked like a bum and he didn't disagree <laughs> <laughs> but on on he was surprised and flattered that mm-hmm. she, you know, liked him or whatnot. So I don't know. I'm curious to see where that goes. Just because it's kind of weird. It's like, you know, this was your basket your son's basketball coach, and you never approached him. But then you come on this show and it's like, how close are you guys gonna get? I wouldn't think to approach um anyone in a child's life like that. I mean, if you like them, you like them. You- it is what it is on that. I guess I just wouldn't want it to be awkward for my kid when it's all said. No, I, I, I get that. 100%. Because, yeah, when you, like, if you have, if you get into a relationship with the coach and then y'all break up, you still got to see the coach. Yeah. I mean, unless they age out of like that yeah. demographic. I but, mean, that's just the risk you take. <laughs> I'm daddy. not about taking those type of risks because that just, that can mess up the kid. I got you. Um, so then we see Ida and I don't know which guy she was talking to, but she told Andrew. him that's what it was. Yeah. No, no, no. About the moisturized ankles. Oh, no, that was Christian. OK, she told him that she liked that he had moisturized ankles. That's attention to detail. I was like, oh, he, the brother just puts lotion on. What are you talking <laughs> <Okay>. about? OK. <laughs> and then she told Dedrick, Dedrick that he gave gay vibes. And I was like, she's going to get sent home. Yeah. That was before we knew that another guy was getting sent home. Right. No, but I, I feel like that's going to be the next female to be the sent first. home. Her and the, and the other flight attendant, not Chris. I don't know who the other flight attendant was. Or Tressa. Tressa. But I think Tressa will make a pass. <laughs> anyway, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> um, so then we see Amber talking to Khalil and it's not going anywhere. And then... Tommy called Joel a ladies' man. I don't really remember who Joel was. He was a guy from New Orleans that had <laughs> oh, the twins. Okay, okay. And yeah, and, and I ain't gonna say so much of a ladies' man, but he's taking the approach of I'm going to talk to everybody, and then I'm going to choose. He's the charismatic guy who can hold the conversation, hold the conversation, and get to know everybody. Like, in I mean, that's not negative at all. No, no. In this setting, like he's the person that. I would argue that if you met him in New Orleans, he would be the one that if you went to the grocery store with him, he would know at least three people in the grocery store. For sure. So, I mean, I'm not going to say it's a negative thing. Um, next. Oh, gosh. Okay. I said he woos all the women. And then we saw Christian introducing himself to Tressa. And then Kyra um, called him back over and had him sit down with her and Vernicia and tried to pull him out of his shell just to mm. let him know, hey, boo, you're cute. People are like, he is attractive, but your conversation isn't hitting it. Like, yeah. give something else. Yeah. Um, then we saw Andrea talking to Dedrick about her cat that has been missing for two <laughs> days. <laughs> And all I could ask was, how did we get here? Yeah, I don't know. And all I could think of was, how was he going to get out of this conversation? How did he get out of it? He, he said, let's well. go talk to somebody, uh, some other, some more people. 
Yeah. And she used almost that same approach to get out of talking to um Ronald. Mm-hmm. Yeah. She was like, I think I'm gonna go talk to him over there. <laughs> yeah. Um, so he ended that conversation with her and then um, nephew Tommy pulled everyone together they went through the first elimination and we found out that Khalil was going home first the funniest part about that elimination was somebody was like what <laughs> <laughs> was like, like already like are y'all surprised that he was going home or? y'all didn't watch this show <laughs> somebody signed y'all up for this show yeah. y'all weren't the ones that figured out the paperwork yourselves so then we see Alexis and Troy talking and um, he gave her his signature move of a kiss on the cheek. And that's what Tommy was also talking about when they were walking back in yeah. was that he offered to take her on a trip. Yeah. He was like, I go traveling with my lady. I'm like, he probably goes to the same beach in Jamaica with every <laughs> single woman. Like, it's probably like a high end resort. Yeah. But he goes to the same resort every time and show them around like he the man of this resort because right, you right, know right. he know the staff but mm-hmm. it's just because he's been going every year for the last five years with a different woman every time <clears throat> <laughs> you got that all planned out did you okay go ahead man. that's what I felt in my spirit that's what oh, my spirit okay. said um, so then Kyra talked to AJ. Apparently Kyra and AJ dated before mm-hmm. and he has a nickname in her friend group as El Chipo yeah. Because apparently on their date, um, her version of the story is she sat down her credit card to pay for or to start a tab of drinks. And she got up, she went to the restroom, and when she came back, the drink tab was on her credit card. And he did not offer to pay for anything on this date. His side of the story is he brought the wrong card. That's what he said. Yeah. He bought the wrong card and it was declined. And so he let her pay for everything because his car was declined. She was like, he could have just been up front with me and owned that part of it. I've never experienced that on the date. I've always... Um, dated guys who were offering to pay for whatever it was that we were going to do and if they didn't have it I didn't know that they didn't have it because that wasn't verbalized um but yeah I've never offered to pay for I've offered to pay for my things when I did not like a guy but I think that's a totally different thing it's like I just want to go ahead and end this interaction so here's my card y'all go ahead Mm -hmm. (laughs) but I don't know. Do you think that he should have had that conversation with her? Because she said they talked on the phone after the date and he still never said anything. Uh, yeah, he should have He should have brought it up. But she should have also brought it up. How do you bring that up? You ask about it. You simply ask. Like, I don't, I don't know <laughs> if I've, I've... I know I haven't paid every time. Mm-hmm. Like, I know that for sure because I know myself. But <laughs> Okay. Somebody's going to tell me I'm stressed out in the comments. Right. Somebody's going to say, she's so stressed. <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, but the thing about it is, I don't, like, <laughs> he should have had the conversation. He should have been 100 with her. Hey, like, they talk about the tab. Oh, but let me ask you a question about that, about you specifically. Was it on first dates? That you haven't paid or just a date in general? No, I'm, I'm pretty sure I haven't paid on first dates. You're pretty sure? I'm pretty sure. Yes. I'm, you should have paid. I'm pretty sure I haven't. Like, it's been some first dates that we, what they call it, Dutch, mm-hmm. that we've went Dutch. But I'm pretty sure it's some that I've, positive, <laughs> that it's, I've paid first You're dates. You're awful and I'm stressed. <laughs> right. It's terrible. It's, it's terrible. But no, uh, I think it should have been a conversation as far as, you know, how things should be split and if you should pay for the tab or anything like that because I, I mean like people go through like at the end of the day you don't know my pockets right well I guess that's also the argument of you shouldn't date if you don't have the money like I always I know like because I know who I am I will always make sure I have enough money to pay for both of us mm-hmm. but at the end of the day if I didn't want to pay for yours and I felt like you were being ridiculous you pay for your own stuff, mm-hmm. or if we, or the, like, or I'm I'll pay for you at a different time in your life. I'll pay for one thing, and then you pay for something else. 
Like I always felt like that was an even trade too, regardless of how much it costs. Mm-hmm. You know, like hey, I'll pay for this and you pay for that because at the end of the day, we know where we're going mm-hmm. and we know what we're doing. <laughs> mm-hmm. And when things start, like when we start doing spontaneous things, then yeah, I pay for. It. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but it, it's like hey, if we can, if we split, it, we split it. If we don't, we don't. But I think it should have been a conversation, definitely. Um, hey, my card declined. I was gonna, you know, don't worry about your card. But it should have been a conversation before she got up. Yeah, because. but if your card declined, well, he probably tried it at the when she was in the bathroom, yeah. which makes me feel like he knew that card was going to decline. Right, he was just trusting in God that it was going to go that through. That it was going to go through. <laughs> like, no, nah, like you put you picked the wrong card out. All right, bet. Just tell her that. It shouldn't be a big deal if we like each other. At the end of the day. But I feel like most people and somebody's probably gonna say in the comments, like, Tommy, you ain't nothing. <laughs> Trying not to cuss. But <laughs> I guess my thing is don't invite me on a date. Even if I'm willing to pay for my part, I still like for you to extend the invitation on a first date. Yeah. Once we're dating, all bets are off. All bets are off. I'll pay for that. things. Cause I mean, that's how we were. Like when we started truly dating, I paid for things, you paid for things. But in the beginning, I felt like you needed to pay for things, but you know, that's me. That's why I did all free <laughs> things. Anyway, go ahead. <laughs> it's so raggedy. <laughs> um, so next up, Ronald and Andrea talk about marriage and kids. And she clocked out of that conversation once he told her that she needed to stay at home if she was going to be with him. Um, that felt kind of controlling. Um, more so because she was like, okay, I get staying home during the foundational years. Mm-hmm. Like, totally not in, um, we're not going to argue about that part. Like, if I could stay home with my kids, don't have to send them to daycare, that was the gist of what she was saying. Cool, but once they go to school, I should be able to go back to work. And he was like, no. Yeah. And like, I, like, I, I didn't, nah. I, didn't like, I, I feel like they're jumping the gun with their conversation even though the conversation flows wherever the conversation flows but I like my take <laughs> on today's society of, of women, of women mm-hmm. I feel like women should be able to make the same decisions that men make mm-hmm. but you make the accommodations for your child and, mm-hmm. it, and it's it, it's on everybody to come to an agreement like if we make enough money to where you can just be like, well, hey, you know, you're going to be out for this many weeks. And then after that, you go back to work. Yeah, but that's a conversation we have during the nine months of preparation for this child. Well, I guess that it, it felt like a natural progression of conversation because they were talking about if they um, wanted to get married. Because some people at this point in life have decided I am not going to get married like mm-hmm. I am comfortable being in a long-term relationship with a person, but we don't have to be married. Yeah. And then also the kids factor because it's not every woman's dream to be a mom. Yeah, yeah. So I get that conversation, but then him basically saying, you don't have a choice when you're my wife. No, nah, it's, like, it's always... Nah, that would have ended everything behind any woman who want, like who is career-driven yeah. um, to have kids and be able to go back to work like I just felt like that was a non-negotiable the way that he presented it yeah. was a non-negotiable and she was like nah we in negotiations around here <laughs> and that's a non-negotiable for me so yeah. they were done with that so um, she ended the conversation by saying that she was gonna go look for someone else to talk to um, Christian did, then circled back around and spoke to Kyra and basically thanked her for the advice um, about stepping up, although it did not help him any. Nope. Um, Cause she walked away <laughs> from him, and it, like when he went to go get her some water mm-hmm. or get them some water, she left. And he was like, "Oh, okay." <laughs> so, I wonder if the producers told her, "Get me go." go they get. probably <laughs> didn't. They probably did. It was just awkward to be like, "Go get me some water." And then for her to just leave. Yeah, yeah it was. <laughs> but she was trying to make an exit by saying she was going to go get the water. So, yeah. um, let's see. Next, all the guys, uh, nephew time, he was talking to all the guys about the women. And it seemed like all the guys were feeling Chris, but nobody could say her name. 
Then we got into the second elimination and we found out that Christian and Ronald were at the bottom and Christian was sent home. So Ronald is going into next week's episode as the guy that nobody likes. Yeah. I don't want to say nobody likes, but he's not the a favorite. Yeah, he's not a, a lady. He's definitely favorite. on the chopping block. <laughs> and um I think that he will go home fairly soon. Oh yeah. Because most of the women there are career women. Most of the women there aren't <laughs> talking about him. That too. So um so one of the questions that I wrote down for us at the ending of this and I know you and I talked about it, who do you think are going to be the first two women to get sent home? I know that we agreed that Ida was probably going to get, gonna sent, get home. sent home. And I say uh mm-hmm. it's between Tressa <coughs> and um the flight attendant with the with the cats. Andrea is that her name? Mm-hmm. I think so. And I say them, like one of them, just, well, Andre, because of her conversation and because, you know, that part. But I think. Yeah, Andrea. But I think Tressa, because not enough men talked about her. Yeah, I don't remember anyone mentioning her name. That's not to say that they didn't mention her right, name. Right, right. But um, she was definitely not one that we saw a lot of interactions with but we also saw with watching the edits of things that like missed the episode from last season yeah. there were a lot of interactions that we missed right right um for whatever reason i do think that um i think that ida is definitely going to be at the bottom i think that amber seemed like she was quizzing the guys. I only seen her talk to one. Well, the guy. That's the one person. Khalil. That was the only person uh-huh. I saw her talk to. And it felt like that was almost like an interrogation But she session. wasn't interested in him. <laughs> so that's why she asked those <clears throat> questions. But still, even if I'm not interested in you, I could make it feel conversational. And yeah. it felt like an interrogation. Um, Ida was just, in my opinion, rude, especially with the... Um, Yes, the saying you give gay vibes and then, you know, just with the guy, uh, Jason, I think, says she talks too much. And then the other guys agreeing that was around was like, Mm -hmm. yeah, she talks a lot. Yeah, because Jason was looking up at the sky and stuff like, how can I get out of this conversation? (laughs) Um, But yeah, I I think Ida will definitely go home first and possibly Amber. Um, I don't think Ronald is going to make it past. What is this like? This is a 10 week show. Something like that. I don't think that Ronald's gonna make it past like week three. Yeah. <laughs> um, and I'm just I'm really interested to see because we had a, also a side conversation about who we thought would make it to the end. And I think we both agreed that we thought Kyra would make it to the end. And um I say Stacy is gonna <laughs> make it to the end. I said Vernicia was going to make it to the end because the guys seemed to like Vernicia. Yeah. Um, I didn't really see anyone say that they liked Stacy. Yeah. They just said that Stacy was pretty. No, nah, they they I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> we'll see. But Stacy, Kyra, and I guess it's one more girl. Vernicia. Like, Vernicia for you. But for me, I don't know. I don't have a place for the third girl. I don't know. I haven't figured out any of the guys that are gonna make it to the end. We didn't watch the um the first episode, the casting special, Mm-mm. because I don't yeah. know. We started and then we both I never were watched like casting special. But we tried though here. this yeah, time around did. and we were both like no at like the ten minute mark. Like my thing is I'm gonna know I'm at I don't like this sounds bad, but I don't care what they did before the show. <laughs> It's like I'm only interested in you on the show and the progression that you have. Like I will figure out who you are because, for example, Khalil and Christian would have been a waste of time to even watch who they were because we don't even get to see them progress Mm -hmm. in the show. And then whoever's next to get eliminated, that'd have been a waste. Mm -hmm. So um, that's my reasoning for not, you know, wanting to even review the casting special. So 
what you say true that true that <laughs> true that true that all right guys well let us know what you guys think of the two gentlemen that were eliminated and who do you think which ladies do you think are gonna get eliminated on the next episode like I hate to look forward to the eliminations but that's essentially all we got that's all on we a got. show in this style also in the, what couples from this first episode are you curious to like who do you think is gonna become a couple right who you care like I'm very curious to see when Troy goes home Mm-hmm. Because I don't believe he's going to make it to the end. Mm-hmm. Troy's playing games. Yeah. <laughs> he's he's trying to be too mm-hmm. slick. You know, anyway. But Absolutely. Yeah, so you guys let us know. Well, comment down below in the comment section. Let us know what you guys think about all those questions that I just asked and can't remember. <laughs> <laughs> um, subscribe to the channel. Turn on the notification bell. And... I guess we will see you guys on Thursday. Wednesday. Wednesday podcast. Oh, yes. Wednesday for the podcast and then Thursday for Married Married at at First Sight. Sight. And then on Sundays. Yeah, and then Sundays with Little Black Book 91. Gosh, this is a lot of recording. Hey, man, I enjoy it. All right. Bye, guys. Peace.